Rogue Show calling in. Rogue Show from South Carolina. You are live on Truth Wanted. What's going on? Uh, hey, uh, how, how are you guys? Doing good, Rogue Show. How about yourself? Awesome. I'm always excited to call in here. Um, I was thinking, I was trying to conjure up a topic. Um, so, so I can talk, uh, talk with you guys. And I found, and I found it in, in the, uh, name Truth Wanted. Yep. So to segue, it, it, to tra- transition, uh, smoothly um what is truth to you yeah good question the yeah, big, big one i haven't been asked that in a long time uh and uh th- th- there's a really complicated way that we can talk about it um and i and i choose to go that way because i think it's the most honest way i can talk about it. i don't think there's one way for me to understand truth i think sometimes and you see this when you mm-hmm. look at philosophy it's very rare that philosophers will ever just contend to just one idea on something like truth and just stick with it and apply it to every single situation because i don't think that's true to the human experience uh, and i don't think that's true to philosophers i, I think uh, with an idea that's so open is truth um, you kind of have to go about it multiple ways. So like one way is called like a deflationary understanding of truth, which is kind of this idea of like, okay, well, um, is truth kind of just a concept that we come up with? It's sort of more of a subjective idea, or are we actually describing something about reality? If we're describing facts about a reality, then that proposes some other hidden assumptions, right? Like, hey, that we actually can know things about reality. Are we describing a reality that exists outside of ourselves, or are we just describing a concept? that we build within ourselves. So to make a really, 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 really long answer short, I would say I don't really have one idea of just truth. I think um, it just has to be whatever it is (laughs) and whatever it is in that moment. Honestly, um, I have an idea of, uh, you know, science and science can be really reliable and science can tell me some predictions that can be made about the world um, in a pretty reliable way. But does that mean I have ultimate truth about reality? Does that mean I have uh, true knowledge of something? I don't know. I think it just is helpful in, um, in in predicting things. And that's that's really what I think truth is for me. It's just more like what's what's a reliable way for me to navigate my world and my experiences. That, that's the best thing I can come up with. But I don't know. What about you, Magic Skeptic? Yeah, I, I want to echo Dan's epistemic humility there and say that I think it would be rather grandiose of me to declare what truth is on truth wanted Damn, because yeah. the subject or the topic of truth is a massive philosophical domain. If you started reading the literature now and you did nothing else but read that literature to the exclusion of all else, including eating, you still wouldn't have read it all by the time you were on your deathbed. So the idea that I'm going to encapsulate this in a 30 second soundbite is just not, it's just not feasible. But what I will say is that generally speaking for the longest time, I held to what's called the correspondence theory of truth, which is to say truth is that which comports with reality. Yeah. Yeah. But as Dan pointed out, there are kind of auxiliary or foundational assumptions built into that. And there are some very good philosophical challenges to correspondence theory. If you're interested in this, you might want to look up something called Gettier cases, right. which are a very perplexing challenge to correspondence theory. Some other philosophers might want to say something like truth is simply a property of propositions. And You know, there are lots of different models of truth, again, and this is why I started by echoing Dan's humility here, because I don't have a resolved philosophical take on what precisely truth is. I have a colloquial, practical understanding of truth that is useful for me in my day-to-day life. You know, if my keys are on the kitchen counter for my car, then I take it to mean that it is true that my keys are on the kitchen counter. But it's not to say that there aren't robust philosophical arguments against that rather trivial statement, you know, not to mention something uh, like, I don't know, um, like people think about theories of matrix and whether or not the external world is real and so forth. You know, 
it's very difficult to answer the problem of hard solipsism and that really is uh yeah. <laughs> that really is a a problem for anybody who wants to articulate a correspondence theory of truth and and so forth so yeah cutting to, to echo dan once again making that very long story short i could just say i don't know but the short answer is i have a colloquial understanding of truth that gets me through the day and then if you want to speak philosophically, I'm much more agnostic on the question. And that's the best I can say for now. And I, you know, I hope that I've, I've pointed, I've, I've put some flags in the sand there and pointed in some directions for things to look at if you're interested in this topic. And as Dan and I mentioned earlier, the Stanford Encyclopedia would be an absolutely fantastic place to start yeah. if anybody is interested in exploring it further. Very true. Very true. Rogue Show, what do you think? Um. So I just, I just want to, I don't point out that I do, that I do kind of, I do kind of subscribe to a um, definition of truth, which is a ver, which is a verified fact that um, corresponds with reality. I know it doesn't solve hard, I know it doesn't solve hard solipsism, um, but I, um, or. I recognize, or I um, act as the, I act in the, um, I act in the sense that I can um, know, that I can know things, though I, though I don't know, though at the other day, like, I don't know how I can know things, and hard solipsism is not, or hard solipsism is not uh, solved, or could, or could potentially be solved. I don't know if it could be solvable, um, but I, but I think I mean, maybe I mentioned this, maybe I didn't on a previous call. Um, mm -hmm. Like, I'm comfortable with presupposing that I'm able to. I'm comfortable with presupposing that I'm able to know things in in order to function. Yeah, yeah. I think. And, like, uh, I will say this too. Think, truth, truth doesn't always have to uh, correspond with knowing as well, right? That that can also be a very different yeah. thing. So, like for example, like like when we're talking about like correspondence theories of truth, which is it sounds like that's what you subscribe to, right? This idea that a verified fact corresponds yeah, with much. reality, right? You know, the like, deflationists like myself would ask, like, okay, well, is snow white because it is white? Right or uh, does snow is snow snow is snow snow because it is white right like you know you kind of ask these kinds of questions that kind of sound nonsensical at first but then you know when you get down to like the, I mean, the brass would, tax of it does it it, it kind it, of you know sounds, uh, uh, go ahead yeah I, I'm I'm very sorry like try. Oh, that's okay. Um, yeah, yeah. It just, it, you I know, it, 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 you know, these things that we kind of take for granted when we're talking about our understandings of the world, right? Really, kind of blow up in its, it's in itself. Um, and uh, they're really annoying conversations to have, right? Um, but yeah, I, I don't like, uh, you know, I, you know, when you get into the brass tacks of it, it's just for the everyday person isn't always as useful, right? Isn't always as uh, interesting, um, because yeah. some people just have, oh, I just think it is what it is, and that's fine. And and it is worth pursuing, I think it is worth thinking about. But at the same time, um, it's not like we're all going to come to an understanding one day and say, kumbaya, and say, yes, we found it. This is the one definition of truth you know like i'm i don't think that's ever going to happen and i'm not really worried about that as long as i think we have an understanding of what other people are talking about when they use that word truth i think that's much more productive and meaningful for myself um so i i would say don't feel like you have to be like ah this is what it is <laughs> and i'm planting my flag here it's okay to be like hey i'm not 100 percent sure you know but that's just my take road show yeah, so ba just one thing I will say. Essentially, this is kind of linguistic terrain, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. We're having a conversation about what a word means. And I would go with Dan there. And what I do in conversations, generally speaking, if a theist calls in here this evening and wants to hold our feet to the fire on what truth means, yeah. I'm not actually terribly concerned about what my definition is. All that matters to me is that I get a good understanding of, of what my interlocutor means when they say that something is true. Let, let me give you a very silly uh, hypothetical. If somebody decided to define truth according to the contents of my house, so 
it's true if it's in my house and it's not true if it isn't in my house. As absurd as that is, so long as I understand that 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 what that this is what that person means when they say that something is true, then at least I can actually have a conversation with them and yeah. I'll know what they mean when they say that things are true and false. Well, that boss is false because clearly that boss isn't in my house. And now suddenly that rather nonsensical statement becomes sensical because at least I understand the definition they're using. So for me, as a person who wants to have these kinds of in-depth philosophical conversations with people, it's just about clarity. It's just about asking yeah. people what they mean when they deploy certain words. And so long as you have that understanding of the meaning that they're intending, I think you can actually have a fruitful dialogue. It's true. But if you are talking to the folks like William Lane Craig, they will hold you to the fire for that. I think I think that's something that people get caught up on, uh, because uh, the Christian understanding of truth is, um, well, traditionally, quite literally platonic. It is like this idea that, hey, truth does exist and you know it through God. <laughs> right. I mean, that's like this sort of uh, traditional understanding of truth. And a lot of like Christian theology has been kind of built around some of that premise. And even today in like modern evangelical circles. Right. They say that, oh, I have the truth. I have the good news i have the word and the word is jesus and he's here to save us and yada yada i mean you know everybody knows your spiel by now but that that really um i think affects the way you can critically understand the world i think like uh you know that can kind of make you really biased towards other people's perspectives and stuff but i do like that approach uh manager skeptic where it's like yeah yeah we gotta understand where are the people are coming from here when they mean that word because that word does not mean what you think it means to a lot of people <laughs> Um, but anyway, Rogue Show, we're talking a lot here. What do you think? Yeah. Um, so you you pose. So it, yeah, I, I subscribe to the uh, the bottom line. I subscribe to like the correspondence with reality theory. Um, you asked me, and you asked me, um, what or um, why is the snow? Why is white snow white? Um. I think that is, I think that is like, ex, I think that is explainable. Uh, when, I think it's so just like to clarify, uh, just, even under, not asking why it's white. Yeah, even, is snow white because it's snow, right? It's a little bit different. What I mean is, is there an inherent property oh no, it's, to something, right? That makes it what it is. So that's, that's, it's, it's a little bit trickier. Where is the whiteness located? Yeah. Well, I, uh, the whiteness is located. The whiteness it, it is pretty much a linguistic game where um, we're defining this uh, this pattern or this color or this thing we the this thing we call color. We're describing that we're describing that adjective as white. Sure, sure. But is is snow is white? The phrase snow is white is true because snow is white. Or is it a property of snow itself? You see, you see the difference there. You see how annoying this gets, right? <laughs> yeah, it's very pedantic. But yeah, there is a difference. And 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 you know, Magic Skeptic's talking about like Gettier problems, right? Like there's examples of this too. Okay, so classic Gettier problem is Magic Skeptic has like 50 cents in his pocket, or whatever, um, and uh, he says he'll hire the man that tells him how much money he has in his pocket. And I say he has 50 cents in his pocket. And I'm right, right? He has 50 cents, but I didn't have any way of knowing that. I'm just guessing, but I'm still right at the end of the way day. So did I know that he had 50 cents? Like, you know, these kinds of, that's a does very that, simplified version of it. But Indeed, but does, know, the question is, does that constitute knowledge? Yeah, yeah, because the it's a true If I the say other example, yeah. The other example I really like is one of um, somebody is walking by a field and they see what appears to be a sheep. Now, unknown to that person, it's not actually a real sheep. It's just a cardboard cutout of a sheep. However, behind the horizon of the hill in that field, there is, in fact, a sheep. That's not the one they're seeing, though. All they're seeing is the cardboard cutout. So they walk away from this field feeling like they know that there's a sheep in the field. The question is, for the correspondence theorist, does this constitute knowledge? If you think that problem through, you'll realize there's a real tricky 
really robust, meaty thing that you've got to wrestle with there if you are a champion of the correspondence theory. Yeah. And it's kind of what Dan is driving at there. So that that's I didn't think we'd actually go this far with this conversation, which is why I just made passing reference to Gettier cases earlier. But I'm so happy that we've actually gotten a chance to expound on it. And so, yeah, you know, correspondence theory has problems associated with it. But then again, I'm not familiar with a theory of truth that doesn't have right. problems. Right. This is not a resolved issue. It's not like all of the philosophers got together and you know they established a philosophical consensus that we now know what truth is yep. it, it, it just you know it's mm -hmm. it's not like it's very rare that you'll find a problem in philosophy that's solved now maybe i'm pushing the boat out there a bit i mean philosophy does make progress don't ever buy into the notion that philosophers are just always asking questions and never arriving at answers there are philosophical problems that have been quote unquote solved but i don't think truth is one of them i don't think truth is one of them Mm -hmm. Yeah, only the analytic philosophers uh, are solving oh. problems, not the continental ones. Anyway, that's a joke. You're not really. <laughs> um, but yeah, sorry. Go ahead, Rogue Show. Um, so if I, if I'm understanding the question, um, is it? Are you saying is it? Um, are are you asking like, is it? Uh, I'm sorry. What was the question? Well, I, well, there wasn't really a question. It was more just like, well, okay. I, I guess I was asking a question, which was, is is the phrase "snow is white"? Is it true because snow is white? No, no, no. I'm talking about. Sorry, mm. I was talking like like skeptic or magic skeptics. Um, uh, sheep. Now. Okay. Sure. Or sheep. So what? Thing. Yeah, sure. What? What's the question? No, no. no I'm, I'm asking what the question. Uh, what was the uh, what was the, the problem? If you if you're asking me to to rearticulate the problem, the problem is, does this person's belief that there's a sheep in the field count as knowledge? Yeah, yeah. Uh, I'd I'd say no. I'd say no because um. <laughs> so we when we uh, for instance, like when we're talking when we're talking to uh, theists, um, and they argue from personal experience. Um, how um, when they talk about from personal experience, like is, assuming like it's assuming that the assuming the guy is like far away is far away. It's not seeing it's not seeing the sheep clearly. Um, I don't. <clears throat> Yeah, and so I think then, so. Uh, so here's what's difficult with this because most people's reaction to that problem is exactly yours, right? Which is no, of course not, because he didn't really have a, a reliable way of knowing something. But here's the difference: somebody that actually saw the sheep versus the person that thought they saw a sheep that it was a fake sheep, but still says there's a sheep out there. Their conclusions are the same. Mm -hmm. If yes. you ask them if they saw a sheep, they would both say the same thing. So what's really the difference between the two of them? Uh, Do they both have knowledge? That's that's the tricky part with this because we're not asking are they using reliable ways of knowing something? No, we're asking do they know something, right? That's kind of the difference. Does that make sense? Yeah. Um Okay, so <laughs> Okay, so now Okay, so now I get cool. now good, I kind of get it. Um yeah, that's awesome. That's awesome. Cool. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> was, there, was there anything else you uh, wanted to ask, Rogue Show? Um, uh, two things. Uh, two things. Okay. So, firstly, um, firstly, I catch, I catch the part where you're shitting on P Peterson. I love it. Um, but did you, <laughs> did you know that there's a uh, did you know that there's a um, website called Wisdom of Peterson? Yes, I have seen yep. it. Yep. Yes, and it's it's you're talking about the website that has like yeah. AI generated Jordan Peterson yep. quotes, right? Yeah, something something that would come out of something that would come out of uh, Kermit's grandfather's mouth. Um, <laughs> damn, damn, dude! Even the callers are riveted into Peterson tonight. This is a bad day for Peterson on this show. That's amazing. <laughs> I love it. 
I love and it. Okay, also, what was the other I'm, thing? And also, um, I'm sure Peterson is going to lose a night's sleep yeah, oh, yeah, because of us. Sure. I'm, I'm sure uh, he'll never he'll never be the same again <laughs> after yeah. our disapproval. Yeah, uh, yeah, uh, yeah. Absolutely. Cry himself to sleep with his millions. Yeah, yeah. Why is the woke mob just trashing me so much? I don't know, man. <laughs> All right. That's that a really good Peter's impression. I'm not gonna lie, that's pretty good, Roadshow. That was good. That was that really was good. good. Um, what was the other thing you wanted to say? And then uh, we'll go ahead and let you go. Yeah. Um. Is there? Uh. This is kind of mainly more for, uh, more for the, uh, the audience sake. But is there an after sh- after show? Yes, we are gonna be doing an after show today. Um. We're gonna see. We're gonna see how Magic Skeptic is feeling today. Okay, because this man is staying up late for us today. Um, but yeah, you should pretty much always, I know, and I usually tell folks, but sometimes if I don't, you know, you can just check in the description, but yeah, after shows on discord, tiny.cc slash ACD discord, um, for that not recorded or anything. It's just a hangout where you can ask questions directly to our hosts. Um, and so, yeah, I will at least be there. Um, and we'll see, we'll see if, uh, Dara's going to be joining me today, but, uh, yeah, thanks for calling rogue show. appreciate, um, your call with us and, uh, yeah, of course. Asking great questions. A pleasure. As well. A pleasure. Yeah, because yeah, it is tricky. It's like annoying. It's annoying how tricky the Gettier cases are. Because again, you look at it, it's like, oh, that's dumb. Yeah, yeah, of course it is. And it's like, oh wait, no, it's it's actually a little more. A little yeah, more. no matter which horn of the dilemma you take, yeah. you've got a bitter pill to swallow. It's um, mm-hmm. yeah. I mean, I was a hook line sinker, um, correspondence theorist, and it might actually serve as a as a answer another philosophical answer i'm afraid to say to your question that you asked me at the at the beginning of the show something i wish i i knew sooner basically and and that was um that that would get your cases would definitely be one of them because it absolutely shattered my confidence mm. in correspondence theory <laughs> yeah. i feel like i'm adrift at sea right now 